Palaroga Shark Media. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. Harry and Meghan have received a warning as a criminal gang targets homes in their Montecito, California area. Recent break-ins, suspected to be the work of an organized gang, have seen safes as their primary target. The most recent burglary occurred last Wednesday, just a five-minute drive from the Sussex's mansion. In July 2022, it was reported that the couple's mansion had experienced six security alerts in 14 months. Additionally, on Christmas Eve 2020, a man allegedly trespassed at their home, leading to his arrest when he returned on Boxing Day. A statement from Santa Barbara County Sheriff Officer Rachel Zick read, In the past week, deputies have taken several burglary reports with notable similarities in the resident layouts, times of occurrence, and items taken. In these burglaries, criminals target unoccupied residences that back up to open spaces such as golf courses as well as creeks, streams, or the ocean. Investigators have noted most of these crimes tend to occur between the hours of 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. The most recent burglaries occurred on Wednesday, January 24th, in the 1500 block of Los Tunas in Monterey. Tocito and two in the 800 block of Sandy Point Lane, Carpentaria. The suspects in these cases are targeting safes. During the recent break-ins, Prince Harry and Meghan were in Jamaica for the filming premiere of Bob Marley, One Love, coinciding with the health issues announced by both the King and Princess Kate. Their public appearances in Jamaica have drawn criticism as being off-key. Editor Charlotte Griffiths expressed her views on GB News, stating, I think it's a bit odd, isn't it? Because he's done not one, but two public appearances. If I were him, I wouldn't have done either of those things, and we haven't seen that much of him lately. He's made two appearances, one with Meghan, and actually I think it's a bit off-key today, of all days especially. The Express reports Harry and Meghan ignored warnings not to travel to Jamaica. The Express reported that a statement had been issued to holidaymakers on Tuesday before their visit warning of potential problems with crime and medical services. The warning stated, Violent crimes such as home invasions, armed robberies, sexual assaults and homicides are common. Sexual assaults occur frequently, including at all-inclusive resorts. Families of U.S. citizens killed in accidents or homicides frequently wait a year or more for final death certificates to be issued by Jamaican authorities. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle need Netflix more than they realise as their exclusive partnership is at risk of coming to an end, warns PR expert Ryan McCormick. Sussexes signed a $100 billion five-year deal with Netflix when they stepped back from the royal family. Releasing content like their bombshell series and the Heart of Invictus documentary, however, their future with the platform after their deal expires next year remains uncertain. Speaking exclusively to the Mirror, Ryan said, The Prince and Duchess of Sussex need Netflix far more than they probably realise because the live streaming platform has such a large audience. Even people who aren't into the royals would not have a problem easily finding them and potentially becoming fans of them. Ryan points out Netflix's extensive reach with approximately 247 million paid subscribers worldwide as of the third quarter of 2023, making it a valuable platform for the couple. He believes that losing the Netflix deal would be a PR disaster for Prince Harry and Meghan, emphasizing this is a deal that they cannot afford to lose. I highly recommend they do everything possible to win the hearts and minds of Netflix executives because if they don't, it's going to be a PR disaster for them. Going through their official site, I was flabbergasted that not only is there no social media handles associated with it, but there's no place on where visitors can sign up for updates. At the peak of their popularity, they could have had thousands, possibly millions of individuals joining their mailing list. Meghan and Harry would have been able to interact directly with those followers and foster a long-term bond with them. It's such a squandered opportunity. Ryan said Meghan and Harry should immediately put up a mailing list, sign up so they can be contacted. I don't think Meghan and Harry realise how truly vulnerable they are right now in the court of public opinion. Yes, people are still giving them their attention, but for how long? Regardless if Harry and Meghan are seen fighting to save the Netflix deal, at the end of the day, it's more important that the deal gets salvaged. If Netflix drops them, I think it'll be difficult for them to get a sweetheart contact with another streaming platform. The Express notes that the Sussex's website doesn't seem all that updated. A section still promotes the expired Spotify deal, presenting it as new. It reads, Archwell Audio is the newly formed audio-first production company started by the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Archwell Audio will produce programming that uplifts and entertains audiences around the world under an exclusive partnership. 
Archwell Audio will produce programming that uplifts and entertains audiences around the world. Under an exclusive partnership, Archwell Audio will join Spotify and their global reach, 180 million premium subscribers and 406 million monthly active users around the world to spotlight diverse perspectives and voices. A warning that the next story following the break contains disturbing language. We'll be right back. Again, a warning that our next story contains disturbing language. A conservation organization that receives support from Prince Harry is facing grave accusations of operating a paramilitary force, comprising certain members who stand accused of committing heinous acts, including physical abuse, torture and sexual assault against indigenous communities in the Republic of Congo. These allegations center around guards employed by African parks and their purported victims are members of the Baka people formerly referred to as pygmies. A thorough investigation conducted by the Mail on Sunday has unearthed disturbing accounts of atrocities committed by these guards. In one harrowing instance, an individual detailed an ordeal in which his head was forcibly submerged underwater while his hands were restrained, and he was subjected to repeated lashings on his back with a belt. The allegations have raised significant concerns about the actions of this conservation charity and its role in these reported acts of violence. Survival International, an organization dedicated to defending the rights of indigenous communities, expressed grave concerns regarding appalling abuses to Prince Harry in a letter dated May 2023. The letter, made available to the Express, conveys the following message. The scale and frequency of violent intimidation and torture leave no doubt that these actions are not isolated incidents. It implores Prince Harry to utilize his influence and position to halt these acts of cruelty perpetrated by an organization with which he is associated. Caroline Pierce, Director of Survival International, emphasized African parks appropriates indigenous lands to transform them into militarized parks or reserves, and subsequently their personal assault individuals like the Barker simply for their efforts to lead their lives. Prince Harry has the capacity to help end this. We are urging him to discontinue his role as a director at African Parks. It is essential for him to distance himself from an organization implicated in forced evictions and the abhorrent mistreatment of indigenous populations. The organization's financial supporters must suspend their funding until the Barker are permitted to return to their lands and their rights to ownership are duly recognized. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalacentric at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, Apple, or your app of choice. And if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue and good times. <laughs>